This is Sunday night in Tehran at one of Iran's most prestigious universities. Students in an anti-government protest were trapped in a car park by security officials. Others outside came under fire from what appeared to be paintballs. As you'd imagine, this is the lead story here on BBC Persian. And for my colleagues in this newsroom, to establish what's happening in Iran, social media is crucial. On Monday, we learned about more protests, such as here at Semnan University, east of Tehran. These students are chanting, freedom, freedom. And by looking at videos such as this, the BBC's confirmed at least 65 protests in recent weeks, many led by women. This is from Shiraz on Monday. <laughs> These girls are chanting, death to the dictator, which is aimed at Iran's supreme leader. And as they know, by removing their headscarves, they're breaking Iranian law. And all the videos we use in our reporting are verified by journalists such as Barman Abbasi. So what we do, we try to find some landmarks in the video that we can uh, also find on Google Maps and also cross-reference them with uh, videos of the same location we've had previously. And the authorities don't want these videos to be seen. The Internet's been heavily restricted. But the protests keep coming. They began with the death of Masa Amini after she was arrested by Iran's morality police. They've become a direct challenge to those in power. And now, for the first time, Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, has responded. The death of the young woman broke our hearts. But what is not normal is that some people have made the streets dangerous, burned the Quran, removed hijabs from women, and set fire to mosques and cars. It may have broken his heart, but there's no sign the supreme leader is listening to these schoolgirls singing a protest song but too scared to show their faces, or to the many others who demand the freedom to speak and dress as they choose. Ros Atkins, BBC News.